can a bilingual child be considered multilingual? And what if the child doesn't respond in one or more of the languages? Can we still say that the child is multilingual? Let's figure it out. And hey, stay until the end to get a bonus from me. Hi, my name is Andrea and I'm a German teacher at a multilingual school in Zurich, Switzerland. I help parents raise their kids in several languages with success. Please subscribe and hit the like button to support this channel. Thanks. It's not easy to define multilingualism or bilingualism, as there is a lot of variation possible. It depends on the viewer, really. Some views acknowledge bilingualism only when two well and equal developed fluencies are found. Others remain rather vague in matters of degree of fluency, and still others suggest that one is multilingual as soon as one can produce complete and meaningful sentences in a second language. So your children could be considered bilingual or multilingual as soon as they utter words in more than one language. But being bilingual is not equal being bilingual. And by that I mean that there are huge differences in how well the languages are developed and the effect that it has in the brain development of children. So now comes the question. If your multilingual child understands an additional language but responds in the strongest language, can you still say that your child is multilingual? What do you think? Please write your thoughts in the comment section. I would love to read them. One thing is clear. Individuals whose bilingual capacities are good, meaning that they are fluent in both languages, are described as balanced bilinguals. However, most bilinguals master one language better than another, and that can change over time, depending on what language is used more often. This is obviously also the case for children that speak more than two languages. I'm proud to say that my husband and I have managed to raise our children until now in three languages and one dialect pretty much equally well, meaning that they are fluent in all of them. My daughter is seven, my son is four at the moment. I don't say this to brag, I only share this with you because I want to show you that it is possible to raise balanced multilingual children. It's just about focusing on the right things. So how do I know that my children are balanced multilinguals right now? I know it because they reply in those languages and they don't seem to have a dominant language. People often ask me in what languages my children play with each other. And the answer is in all of them but not at the same time. It depends on what they are playing. Sometimes in Danish, mostly when they play freely, when they are around me, they often use Spanish. When they have friends over, they use Swiss German and High German when the nanny comes. Here are some examples. La como puede ser nudos? A mi como puede ser nudo? Mira, mira. Primero les pones acá. Sí. Después haces así, así, espera, mira, no, vamos a probarlo con uno. ¿Cuál quieres que yo pruebe con, con este o con eso o con ese? Ya que vos le ya que lo eres. Ya que le ya que le volcán, ya que le haces volcán. But I can't do it. I can't do it. No. But the Ulla Cat can't do it. No. In the Ulla Cat school, I said, I'm okay. Then I can't do it. 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 Ja, die Meerjungfrau. Ist ja Meerjungfrau da? Ja. Und Meerjungfrau geht. 
Ja. Und was haben wir da? Ach, da ist das Ritterkreuz. Von Ui, nein! Now here comes the power tip for you, cosmopolitan parents or parents to be scattered around the world. If you are aiming for balanced multilingualism, which means high developed language skills in various languages at a young age, it's key that you don't let any language become too dominant. Yes, because as soon as that happens, the dominant language tends to overshadow the other ones. And then you are tapping into the field of subtractive multilingualism. More about that later. Is it bad that children respond in their strongest language? No, of course not. Does it bother you? That's actually the question. You don't have to feel bad if your child isn't responding in the target language. That only means that you need to readjust your expectations and go over your plan again. If your child chooses to speak in another language with you, it's often because you either mix languages when speaking to your child or the child simply hasn't gotten enough language exposure. Often the strongest language becomes too dominant, better developed than the other ones. And that leads us to the next te technical term, which is receptive or passive multilingualism. That means that a person can understand the language in spoken or written form, but doesn't use it. A productive or active multilingual is a person that can understand and use a language, also in spoken or written form. So what is your goal for your multilingual family? If you aim for active multilingualism, are you willing to put in the time and effort that it requires? Do you have the resources for it? If for some reason the answer is no, then take the second best option, which is accepting and embracing passive multilingualism. Children that are passive multilinguals learn still quite a lot from listening and being exposed to the, the, the additional languages. That is why it's so important that you continue speaking and addressing your child in the target language, no matter how your child responds. As soon as your children truly feel the need to use that language, they will be able to develop productive and active skills faster. Why? Because somewhere in their brains, everything that they listen to over years is still in there. They don't lose it. When they get older, they can actively keep on developing their language skills with very good chances of being able to develop them fully, sometimes even accent-free. However, this requires that they put some effort in consciously improving their language skills. So there is a chance that their language skills d deteriorate if they don't maintain them. But if the children had good experiences in the early years with that culture and language, chances are high that they might want to become lifelong language learners. And voila, you've reached all that you can ask for in terms of raising multilingual children. The sad reality is that many multilingual parents feel discouraged once the children respond in the strongest language and they stop being consistent and switch to the dominant language as well. That's a huge mistake. Instead of stopping, what would have been a better approach is to readjust the language strategy and, for example, choose another language learning method. If you are interested in this topic, you can find on my webpage a mini course that shows you everything you need to know about language learning methods, all in the description below. So what happens when parents stop using the target language with their children? Well, that leads directly to subtractive multilingualism. And what is that? Experts talk about subtractive bilingualism when people learn a second language at the expense of the first one, meaning that individuals often lose skills and fluency in their primary or secondary language, especially if that language is not being reinforced. Now here comes the tricky part. Scientists argue that the benefits that they so often talk about that come along with growing up bilingual or multilingual only apply in cases of additive bilingualism, meaning that only if two or more languages continue to be used, valued and developed, only then it has a special 
special positive effect on the brain development of the children meaning that they become more creative, open-minded, and so on, only if they keep on developing their language skills parallel to the majority language. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google benefits of growing up bilingual and you'll get tons of articles, videos of experts talking about that. Now back to our topic. In cases of subtractive bilingualism, scientists state that there is no advantage over growing up monolingual. What is really bad and should be avoided at all costs is what's called semilingualism. That's when no language is developed well enough for the age of the child. That is dangerous, counterproductive, and affects the overall development of the child negatively. It's bad for their self-esteem, their identity building, their social skill, and academic development. So in other words, it's a disaster. So whatever you do, make sure that your children get at least in one language enough exposure to be able to develop as a minimum one at a normal pace. If you manage to do more, great, but as a minimum one. Watch this part again if necessary, watch it again, because it's so important that this information sinks in for you to be able to, to make the best choices for your family. You might have to adapt your goals, your ambitions, because we're talking about children here, not a bag of apples. So it's a big responsibility. And um, to me personally, it's important that you have this information if you are a teacher, a language therapist, a pediatrician, or a multilingual family. Done. Great. Since you have watched until now, here comes your bonus. It's a glossary with all the technical terms that I talked about in this video. Check your inbox if you're already subscribed to my newsletter. If not, you can get it by clicking on the link in the description below. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a comment telling me what you're thinking. Watch also these other videos. Keep on doing a great job and talk to you soon.